When did you get the call and, and how did this come together? Um, I got the call, was it? No, September, November? Um, by Sashia Jones. Um, I thought she was playing at first. And I started asking the questions, like, uh, are you sure? Is, is Ted okay? Is, is Tommy all right with this? Is Twan okay with this? Is Karan okay with this? Um, and she's like, I wouldn't even call you if uh, everybody wasn't okay. So, all right, let me think about it. Give me about a week. You know, I have to give him a little jitters out first. And to you, Karan, uh, just what's it like getting back together with these guys? I mean, it's everything. Uh, it's, a, it's a point in history that was pretty much not talked about for an extended period of time. Um, I worked television, I was broadcasting games for the Wizards and being an independent contractor and, you know, seeing Antoine at, you know, the games uh, never felt quite right. But now having Gilbert, you know, back where he belongs, like it is, it's only right, it feels special. So it's good to see it. Gil, uh, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Um, you're no shrinking violet. So to say that you have to get the jitters out, that's kind of hard to believe that after all these years, there would still be jitters? Yeah, yeah, it was, um, when you think about how I left, you know, um, just got on the plane, took off, didn't say bye to anybody, anyone. So it was more guilty on my part, you know, that I didn't get to say bye to everyone who took care of me. So it was, it was more of those, like, oh my God, I'm gonna see everybody. I just <laughs> pretended that I, that I, you know, left behind. So it was, it was just one of those things where it was, it was more me just being guilty of how I left. Gilbert, how long did it take for you to get over the disappointment of how it ended here? Yesterday? No. Yesterday? Um, no, serious. It was um, like going to the airport when I got to the airport in LAX. And I didn't really think about, oh, there's a Dallas. There's a Dallas. And those people are going to the same place. So like I had the hoodie on, <laughs> had this, and then uh, it was oh my God, Gia, you really coming? And then everyone's like, oh, I can't wait, I'm coming to the game. And I was like, oh, oh, oh okay, this is this is not what I expected. I don't know what I I was really mentally thinking about, but um, the love has just been unreal. You know, like I'm still averaging about thirty, <laughs> still a man. Karan, <laughs> you've had success uh, after post Wizards, and, you know. Obviously, and fun, but how do you think that we should define the era of the big three? Just what it is. You know, we was all walking buckets. <laughs> you know, it was fun to watch. Uh, we had, we identified with this city. Um, this city uh, identified with us. It was a perfect collaboration. And I think this for years, like the, the, the point of just not addressing that you know, that connection of what we uh, collectively brought together to the city. And now just seeing uh, everyone get their flowers in the moment, it's gonna be special. Like I'm trying to like just stay focused on kicking y'all ass. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you just like, damn, my, my brother's in the house. Like it's, it's really dope. Like it's a dope experience. And I'm just like, I'm happy for him. You know what I mean? Like, I'm genuinely happy for him, like in this moment, like this is special. Gilbert, because this was a difficult time when you were, you know, when you were here, the, the end, when you were here, do you still have regret, do you still have regrets about how it ended? Yeah, you know, we, we always, you know, regret our past, but our past usually um, let us know who we are now. You know, um, <laughs> I was really immature, I still am. <laughs> um, but you know, it's just you know when we're when we're when we're living life, we don't really understand what we're doing sometimes. You know, we're just being who we are, athletes. You know, fathers, friends, and you know now when you get to sit back and just reflect on how life was, you know, you can you always like, man, I wish I would have changed this, 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 this. You know, but um, it, it is who I am today. Um, I mean, this moment. <laughs> You know, if we, we erase any part of history, this moment doesn't happen, you know, where we are right now. Hey, Gil. Well, we did. 
Okay. The impact you made in the city. Hey, listen, y'all don't like this man. I, I, I got it. Oh, it's just like when we played, bro. They see me all the time. They see me all the time. He's just not an interesting man. Man, just my wingman. You're supposed to jump in here. This your impact, your legend to this city. Talk to a lot of players. They said uh, you kind of have like your jersey unofficially retired. Nobody wants that to zero because of the impact you made. Just what does that mean to you, knowing the respect that you have amongst your peers and players? Of you know, it, zero. it actually, it actually is that. That's the biggest honor, you know, through players who grew up, you know, um, loving the zero. You know, when they come to the city, you know, like especially like Westbrook, somebody like Westbrook, you know, uh, when he comes here, and he's like, "Nah, I want to wear four. I'm not gonna wear zero because of, you know, because it's basically retired in his mind." And that was just like I was just sitting on the couch when I heard like, "Wait, what?" Because like, like yo, like you can throw that like. Who, what you do, triple doubles, you know, they, you take that zero and you're gonna put it on a bigger display for, you know, the future, you know, but it was, it was, it was honoring, to be honest. And then for Karan real quick, because he's gonna go. Last question for Karan, anybody? Appreciate it, John. Hey. Oh, Wizards. I see you out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I got a question for Angela. Yes. <laughs> uh, you can probably speak to this uh, better than anyone. You guys played, you practiced here. There was no G League team. Can you just talk about how the uh, franchise has come so far in terms of the resources that the players have? Yeah, uh, first of all, I just want to give thanks to Ted and Zach and, and tell me for putting this all together. Um, it's a long time overdue and uh, you know, if it wasn't for those three people, none of this would have happened. But um, just like with the, the, the way the game is being played in general, everything has changed. I mean, I think social media, social media, you know, you got, you know, your fingertips, you have access to just about any and everything. Uh, me being involved with, you know, an organization, the same thing with Karan. Um, you know, when we played, you had four coaches and that was it. Now, 15, 20 coaches that travel with the team. So the resources that these uh, players have is unbelievable. Uh, from the medical staff, it's like uh, unlimited now amount of, uh, you know, people that help out with uh, injuries and things of that nature. So it's just the way the game is being played and the way the game is just globally, just it's unbelievable right now. So um, just with every decade, every, you know, style of game, I mean, everything changes. And right now it's just, I mean, you can watch a game from anywhere in this world. And that's just an attest to uh, our fans from all over the world. Uh, people love the game of basketball, kids to this day. So when to see that, you know, it's a couple of years ago, a long time ago, but our generation kind of helped move uh, the NBA to where that where it's at right now. It's, it's kind of special. Gil, hey, welcome back to DC. Right. <laughs> I'm curious for you, just how was the dinner, and maybe what was one of the favorite stories that you guys talked about yesterday that you really felt with? Um, the dinner was great. You know that. Be honest, that was the first time we've ever. Like, you don't really talk to the season ticket holders, uh, <laughs> um, but it, it it was amazing, you know, to, to see people come out. Like, you know, some of the autographs I was giving out, they're like, "Well, oh, when I was a little girl, you, you know, my your, your pictures on my wall," and I'm like, "Oh my God, time has now you're making me feel old." Um, but it, you know, just listen to everyone's story, um, listen to everyone after, you know, tell their stories of what they remembered of us. You know, that was that was very very special. And I'm curious, how much have you tracked this current team and what do you think about their makeup and chances to make a run? I'm mean, just be honest, when uh, Bill was not playing, I wasn't watching. And I, I'm just one of those, you know. Um, um, it's, you know, when I found out Wes was, was, was coaching the team, you know, when he got the job, I was excited because, you know, Wes was one of those, those guys that was, um, I mean, we, we remember his first, um, Scout report, report yeah. over there shaking, didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he was one of those guys that really was outspoken, you know, for someone who really wasn't a coach or assistant coach at the time. You know, he was always on me to, you know, pass the ball, play the game the right way, you know, work. And he always stayed on my back. And it was like, you know, now that you're a coach, you're going to be an amazing coach. So, you know, just getting to see, you know, you know, Wes just do his thing is going to be amazing anyway. Gail, as you kind of talk about um, coming back and, and seeing everybody for the first time and, and hopefully kind of making up for some of that guilt, I'm wondering, do you, I know it's only
probably been 12 hours or something, but do you feel different or lighter at all? No, I, I, I do. Um, it's, it's like this, this weight is off. Um, it, it's just one of those things, like I didn't even want to fly airports that connected this way. Like it was, it was one of those, it was this thing that was just like, like um, that I, I created, you know, it's like for me to just, you know, deal with it, you know, even though I still, you know, wore my, you know, I still got all my wizard's gear. I got all the new gear. I got all the jerseys. Um, I made sure I got, you know, my shorts and socks every year uh, from the team. <laughs> but it was just one of those things where globally I was like, you know, um, you know, let me, let me keep my distance. You know, um, it's, it's safer. It's safer for me this way. And you mentioned um, watching Brad. How have you seen him evolve into kind of a franchise guy for this team? I, I didn't realize he's 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 ten years in. Like he's like is is he the oldest wizard player within the last 20, 30 years? Ten. Longest ten years. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That, I mean, just you know, it's like he is the big dog. <laughs> he he he. Um, but just watching him, just you know, carry this city, quiet, you know, very clean cut guy. Um, he's done. He's done really a great job. You know, I think you said on the podcast maybe the one of the best moments was the shot you hit in Chicago. And of course, you had the moment in Staples Center. But what about this building? What's your favorite moment? Um, actually, um, Larry Hughes turning the ball over Game Six, and um, I had to uh, chase down Kirk Heimer for that block. Which they would have went up six, and I saved. I saved the play. So your favorite moment is a defensive play? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no, because that was like they would have went up six. But that's your favorite moment is a defensive play. <laughs> that don't make any sense. For a guy who didn't play defense. exactly. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's like when you like the Utah one. Yeah. Listen, that's that's turn around before the shot, win the basket. But I don't believe but there was no. Play there, there was no. There was, there was really no significant, and there was no pressure. It was a tie game. If I missed it, it would go to overtime. Nobody thinks about it. But that that we could have lost that series if they would have went up six. And then we'd have had to go back to Chicago. Then I had to save you guys again. You know, it's just, I'd rather do it right here. You did on defense again? Yeah, did on defense <laughs> My proudest moment, a defensive play. Just wondering if you brought like the kids or someone special with you to experience this. No, so I, I had all my kids come in, right? <laughs> and they, uh, high school basketball season started. This week, so I was like, as much as I want you guys to just show you how huge I was, um, you guys are starting your 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 high school, especially my son. He's actually where I made my name against Crenshaw High School. That's my son's first game, you know. So he's playing, you know, Crenshaw High School for, you know. So I told him, yeah, pressure you have to score seventy something at least, you know. And Antoine, was there any any part within these last few years that you may have reassured you that it was okay? He wouldn't get booed. People do love him here. I didn't even know he felt that way. We did the Zoom call about like a week or so ago, and he said that, you know, I'm nervous. And I'm like, nervous about what? And I guess being his teammate, knowing the effect he had not only in the community but for his organization, I'm like, you really worried about being booed? Like, I, I get the opportunity to see fans all the time, being in this building a lot. And that's the only thing I hear, man, like, you know, watching you, Gil, and all those guys, you, you guys are the reason I became Wizards fans. So for him to even think that way, but then I had to think, you know, I, that's Gil, you know, always making up something. But I didn't know he actually felt that way until we had the Zoom call. And then as we got close, he's like, man, I'm nervous. They're going to boo me. I'm like, who want to boo you? Like, why? But uh, I, it kind of threw me off that he felt that way. But for him to be back, to see familiar faces. And I think tonight at halftime, it's going to be unbelievable. You know, we got the opportunity to talk to some season ticket holders yesterday. They, you know, telling telling us they fund his memories. Uh, we got some more engagements we're going to commit to after this. But for him to get his flowers, because I'm always here. I'm always getting recognized. People are always saying thank you. But like I said, it's been 12 years since he's been back. And we talk here and there. I, you know, saw him, you know, every so often. but. To have not only him and Karan here at the same time, it just makes it that much special. This question is for both of you. Hi, first of all. Uh, 
what message do you have for the fans tonight who are going to cheer you on when they hear your names at halftime? And each of you can take a turn with that. Uh, for me, is you know just you know just thank you because you know for me this is my second home, and when I talk to my parents, you know they always talk about you know pump it up, raising his hands like. You know, this is what we had our fun this memory. And I just remember the atmosphere. Every game. Um, it was a show. People came to see us play. So um, for the fans to come back, just thank you for the support you've given not only myself, but my family and my friends. I appreciate it because without the community, without the fans here in D.C., none of this is possible. So it's just going to be almost like a big homecoming. You know, we're all just going to reminisce and, you know, to be uh, acknowledged with Gil and Karan as well. It's going to be special, but like, just to thank them for all the support they've given, not only myself, but the team and the continued support they give to this organization as well. Um, they made us, you know, um, you know, no, no one superstar star in any sport is that big without the fan support. You know, they fell in love with our personalities, our on-the-court styles, off-the-court styles. Um, showed up to events in cold, you know, in snow, um, just, you know, fans all over the place. Um, you know, when I'm in L.A., got the D.C. fans still, you know, um, talking about shots and stories. So the fans are, you know, what made us come in here at 2, 3, 4 in the morning, you know, like, I can't wait, you know, I can't wait for them to see these new moves. You know, that that's that's how, you know, we were training um, just to go out there and just, you know, put on a show. Um, and, and you know, to, to come back and, you know, experience that again is amazing. Antoine, what would you say is uh, your fondest memory of Gil? Uh, I think one of the, I mean, just, he made the game so much easier. Not only for himself, just watching it, but for me, I mean, I got so many easy baskets because of so much attention on him, but I think the thing that makes me appreciate Gil is I had him when he was in Golden State and he was a rookie, and I seen so much potential, and I seen the hunger to, you know, want to be great, but just still trying to figure things out. And then when I got here, to see all the sweat equity he put into his craft and his game, and to see that this guy's a household name, I've been fortunate to play with LeBron, Kobe, Shaq, Steve Nash, Dirk Nowitzki. He's right up there with all those guys. I've seen the work that he put in. He, I mean, one time he missed a game-winning shot. They said two or three o'clock that night, he shot a thousand times that same shot that he missed. He wanted to be great. And to see the transformation of him as a rookie and go to state to when he got here, he made the game look easy. So it was almost like your little brother. You know, you know, schooling him down, you know, they go to state, man, can't do nothing. But then he got here, you know, he's the man. He made the game. I appreciate his craft, his work ethic, and um, even some of the stuff off the court as well. But just to see the way he evolved as a player, as a leader, I mean, it was like, you know, little brother kind of grew up a little bit. He, still he like, just said a leader. <laughs> I was never a captain. No, I, I, no, 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 no. I didn't say <laughs> that was you know, one captain. But when you was on the court, and it was time to get a basket. What happened? Oh, no, I was gonna get that. Exactly. But it's mm -hmm. funny they never made they never made no, me. No, we captain. were smart. We weren't gonna make you no captain. <laughs> never made me a captain. I was never. A you captain. didn't want to be a captain. No, I didn't. Exactly. I didn't, did not want those I don't want that responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious, a little bit less than three, or a little over three hours, you're gonna walk on the court. Do you still have butterflies? Yeah, I'm I'm sweating under here, like um. Actually, this is the hard part. That that the, between those lines is that's that's me. Um, you know, it's it's like going out there. You know, that atmosphere, the fans, the ball, the court. That's that was my life. You know, this this was the game that I had to learn. You know, dealing with the media, talking to the media, the uh, personalities. You know, listening to how they ask questions, trying to understand questions. So that was where my actual job you know, went into understanding the media side of it versus that, that, that part was easy. <laughs> I got to do that by myself, but it's just understanding the personalities, you know, reading questions before questions come, you know, trying to get ahead of things, giving sound bites, 
you know, so that was really my, <laughs> that was really my job, you know. Whether it was Agent Zero or Hibachi or do you have an all-time favorite nickname? Okay, so my nickname is Agent Zero that said Hibachi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Wes just said it yesterday. There's a, a lot of there was a lot of stuff that you, you kind of brought to the game that guys that now play you know have incorporated into theirs. Uh, is there anyone in particular that reminds you of yourself the way they play? Um, you know, a little bit of Dame. You know, Dame. Um, Harden the way he you know draws fouls. Um, I, I I don't like the way like they're being ref sometimes. Um, you know, when you're talking about understanding the game, it takes discipline, it takes creativity to draw fouls. That means you have to know human behavior. You have to know what a player can and can't do defensively. You have to know rules. So when you're talking about these guys, like drawing fouls, that means they know you're not disciplined. So when you make rules against that, it says, we're, we're taking away, you know, everything you're putting into this game. You know, but those two guys are, and a, a similar question, if there's one guy in the NBA that if it's a last second shot, you you would choose to have the ball in their hands, who would it be? Last second shot, uh, ooh, I, I give it a name. I give it a name and Luca's close second. <laughs> Gilbert, do you hope to be back here more often in the future uh, and strengthen these ties that you're renewing here this um, you know, yes, it's always, you know, it's always that first initial date that's um, nerve wracking, you know, um, but, um, you know, if they, you know, want me back around, of course. They want you back. <laughs> make sure He's going to hire me when he becomes general manager, just so y'all going to see a lot of me later on in life. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I'll be around, you know, behind the scenes, you know, I, I talk to, I used to talk to Wall, you know, once, twice a week, um, Bradley. Um, trying to, you know, when he got into that little thing of, of two summers ago, trying to mend it, you know, basically tell him, like, this, 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 this game is bigger than, you know, our egos and trying to get Wall to understand that, you know, there's a new captain. <laughs> there's a new captain and you, 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 um, you need to really try to understand the way the team is moving. You've been out, you've been hurt. You know, it's kind of like when you came in when I was here, you know, you know, sometimes you got to, you know, give them keys up and, you know, try to, you know, be a part of this team. You know, he understood, you know, it, it hurts, you know, but, you know, I have examples of that where when I was in Golden State, you know, he was the, you know, franchise guy. A year later, you know, I'm the face of this team and he's like, it's your team, you know, you know, I'm the captain though, all right. <laughs> well, so got that, you know, uh, that straight, you know, but it's, it's you know, giving him those words, I, I had it in real life. You know, so when Wall came, it was easy for the, this is your team. If you need me for anything, I'm here. You know, so just trying to get him to understand that with Bill, and, you know, he understood, and, you know, now they're both in, you know, situations where they're both happy, happy again. All right, anything else? Well, one more. <laughs> Derek, can you get a mic, please? Ten <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> It's not necessarily a question, but um, you were very um, good with your quotes, Gil. Uh, and there was one in particular where you said that your swag was phenomenal. So I wanted to end it with you saying, uh, a new one or my, that one? No, my swag is still phenomenal. It is. Okay. It is. Okay. I'm still better than these guys. <laughs> right. you probably touch, he probably ain't touched the ball in probably a couple of years. Have you? I touched the ball about a month ago, and I won't touch it again. <laughs> Here's a quote. Oh. Here's a quote. I took almost 2,000 shots before I got here, just in case someone wanted to challenge me. Have you shot on those reps? Not yet. Not yet.